There are loads of exciting new motorcycles rumoured for release later this year, and so here are my 12 picks of the best. First up, from Honda, we've got this somewhat familiar looking 350 single cylinder mini adventure bike that's been copyrighted with these designs, and so we could expect it to hit the market sometime in the next year or two. It looks to be based upon their 348cc air cooled single cylinder, which currently powers their CB350 and CB350. CB350 RS. Now these bikes aren't currently available in the UK as they're specifically produced for the Asian markets, but it has to be said, they're really quite nice looking little retros. But it seems like Honda have been inspired by the success of the Royal Enfield Himalayan, with these designs showing the same engine put to use in a form factor that looks extremely similar. In fact, we talked about this one on the podcast recently, and it's perhaps a bit surprising that Honda would be so brazen about it, with some of the shapes and styling looking almost like a like-for-like -like copy. But thing is, to be fair to them, the Himalayan is a huge seller, and you could say a bit of a cult bike, so it really does make business sense to try and produce something somewhat similar. Now, those other 350 bikes that Honda already make aren't particularly performance orientated, with about 20 horsepower peak and tipping the scales at around 180 kilograms. But look, that would put a bike like this right in line with the air-cooled 411 Himalayans, which really are about simplicity and robustness more than face-melting acceleration. So what do you think? Is it low of Honda to be so shameless in ripping off the Himalayan? Or does it make complete business sense? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Meanwhile, over at Enfield, it looks like a classic version version of their 650 parallel twin could be on the way, with a test bike having been spotted out on the road in recent weeks. At the moment, there's already a classic 350 in the lineup, and what you get with a classic is a little more chrome and historical influence in the design, and so I'd expect very much the same here. Now, currently, we've got the Interceptor 650, which is a good all-rounder retro bike, the Continental GT Cafe Racer, the Super Meteor Cruiser, and most recently the Shotgun 650, which is a little more custom style. So you can see there is room in the lineup for something a bit more traditional looking, and the 650 engine would offer more than twice as much power as the 350 Classic at 47 horsepower, and so for me, that would make it a much more tempting proposition. Now, Enfield openly admitted they're planning loads of new bikes over the next few years, and so this one looks pretty much nailed on, as well as a rumoured scrambler version of the 650, which I also think looks pretty tasty. In fact, this approach of rolling out several versions of a specific engine or platform is is super common as it allows manufacturers to cover several genres of bike without having to invest too heavily in R&D. And so it should come as no surprise that they're looking to do the same with the new liquid-cooled single that powers the Himalayan 450 that was announced last year. Both a Scrambler version and a Roadster version have been spotted out testing, and although we're yet to ride the new 450 Himalayan, on paper, it really does look pretty good with much more power than the air-cooled equivalent, as well as a big advancement in tech with a neatly designed TFT display. Now, the Himalayan is firmly adventure and off-road focused with that big 21-inch front wheel and relatively tall stance, and so what I think these bikes would allow them to do is go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Triumph Scrambler 400X in the Scrambler market and the Triumph Speed 400 in the Roadster market, both of which have been super popular since they were announced at the back end of last year. Thing is, though, it looks like they won't have it all their own way for much longer, and Enfield produced some of the best bikes in this capacity range and styling genre, as well as being generally super competitive on price, and so these are certainly ones to watch. Now also looking to get involved in this sort of market, it looks as though Moto Guzzi are working on a smaller capacity retro, with this test bike being spotted a few times out on the road. It's unmistakably a Moto Guzzi given the shape of the tail lights and the fuel tank, but actually the engine appears to come from their sister company Aprilia, with the covers and contours being pretty much exactly the same as the parallel twin that powers their RS457 sports bike. In fact, a lot of the chassis looks pretty similar to that bike too, but they've just adapted it with their typical Moto Guzzi styling, and so while I wouldn't expect it to feel particularly authentically retro in terms of the riding experience, it should be 
a fun bike to ride. And also, a parallel twin with a 270 degree crank should offer a bit of a point of differentiation in a market that's largely made up of singles. There's a full video on the channel with all the details of the spy shot, so do check out the link down in the description below if you want to find out more. Now, in addition to that bike, it also appears that Moto Guzzi are potentially bringing back some sort of scrambler into their lineup with an application to review their copyright in the US of their store. Stornello name. This was most recently put to use on the 2016 V7 Stornello Scrambler, which it has to be said is a fantastic looking bike and so I'd very much hope that they're going to bring something similar back to life. I guess the other possibility is that they could use it on a more rugged version of the 457 that we were just looking at. But either way, this one looks very lightly as although a lot of manufacturers renew their copyrights periodically just to hang on to their names for potential later use, use, Cycle World report that the US Patent and Trademark Office generally have stricter requirements around having to actually use the name on a product, and so hopefully this one will be in dealers in the not too distant future. Now we just mentioned the Triumph 400s, which like I say have been super popular and in fact I just reviewed the Scrambler 400X and thought it was absolutely fantastic, but it looks like they're due to roll out even more variations on this format in partnership with Indian manufacturer Bajaj. Now they're responsible for making all the 400 bikes so far and their MD, Rajiv Bajaj, recently came out with the following. I stand by the statement that you refer to that every year there should be at least one, not just one, new distinct new Triumph motorcycle centered around the 400cc displacement engine. And for sure it will be there. We expect a new motorcycle this year and indeed for the next three years at least there are several products in development right now now. Now a half-fed cafe racer style bike has been spotted out testing so perhaps a baby Thruxton is on the way but it would also make total sense if Triumph wanted to get on that Himalayan style game with maybe a mini tiger. But let me know what sort of bike you'd love Triumph to build on their 400 platform down in the comments below. In fact, there are quite a few bikes rumored from Triumph this year, so we'll rattle through them now. And one is the Tiger Sport 660, which was launched a year or two back, but has already been spotted out testing with a few new components. You see, they recently launched the Daytona 660, which is a sports bike interpretation of the platform, and it came with a few key upgrades, including radially mounted brake calipers and a boost in peak power. This updated Tiger Sport 660 appears to have the same upgraded brakes and so that had me wondering whether they're planning a mid-cycle update that brings in some of these features hopefully with the increased power as well to the Tiger Sport 660 and that in itself begs the question will they also be rolled out as a mid-cycle update to the Trident 660 naked both the Tiger Sport and Trident are already fantastic bikes to ride but better brakes and a bit more punch is always going to be a welcome addition now on top of that, Triumph are also expected at some point to release a more off-road and adventure bias version of their 660 bikes, with Tiger Rally 660 being the name that's been floated most frequently so far. And it'd be no huge surprise with many mainstream manufacturers having adventure versions of their middleweight bikes, like the hugely successful Yamaha Tenere 700, the Suzuki V-Strom 800DE, the Honda Transalp XL750, and the Aprilia Tuareg 660. So you see, a Tiger Rally 660 would make perfect sense in that market and also plug a bit of a gap in the Triumph lineup. You see, currently the smallest capacity, most affordable off-road biased adventure bike that they offer is the Tiger 900 Rally Pro at £14,500. Lastly, on the Triumph front, they've also been spotted testing a new version of their Speed Triple RS. And while this is a fantastic motorcycle with loads of tech, big power increases versus the previous generation, less weight as well, one of the common criticisms that you might see in a lot of reviews Views is that the suspension is a little bit on the firm side. Now, after it was launched, Triumph followed up with a half-fed RR version, and that bike came with a significant upgrade to the suspension with the Olin semi-active electronically adjustable Smart EC2 system. So this spied update to the RS naked version appears to get the same electronic suspension, and so perhaps that'll go some way, along with presumably revised calibration, to alleviate some 
some of the complaints about the ride quality of the current iteration. Now, just this week, Husqvarna announced the full details and price of their upcoming Svartpilen 801, which is a flat track inspired bike built upon the fantastic KTM 790 Duke, with KTM being a sister company and sharing lots of their platforms and tech. To me, it genuinely looks like a brilliant bike with the typical minimal Husqvarna styling, but for some people, perhaps the upright riding position and the flat track semi knobbly tyres might not be quite sporty enough. Thing is, Husqvarna generally launch a Vitpillen equivalent of every Svartpillen bike, and they normally get a slightly lower riding position with lower bars and more road biased hardware like stickier tyres. So I think it's fair to expect that a Vitpillen. An 801 is due sometime soon, and the only big question is whether they'll use the same 105 horsepower 801 engine or whether they'll go for a 901 version to give it a bit more punch. The KTM 990 Duke, for example, makes more like 120 horsepower, and so if it was fitted with this parallel twin, that would make for a very spicy, retro-inspired bike indeed. Speaking of KTM, in recent years, they've frequently collaborated with the super high-end luxury car brand Brabus to produce limited-run versions of their 1290 Super Duke Super Naked. And with that bike recently being updated to the 1390 Super Duke, there's a rumour that Brabus are working on a 1400R for release in the not too distant future. You see, recently they filed a trademark application for a couple of variations on the Brabus 1400R name, and so almost certainly there is something in the works, but just don't expect to spot too many of these out on the road. The 1300 version in its first generation, for example, was limited to just 154 bikes, all of which sold out in a couple of minutes, and yet it cost a fairly eye-watering £37,000. Still a very cool bike to look at and so I'm interested to see what they come up with next. But to round off this list we have to talk about one of the longest rumoured and most anticipated bikes of the past few years and that's the Yamaha R9. You see Yamaha have filed copyrights multiple times around this name in recent memory but it was only actually a couple of weeks back that a race team manager confirmed that an R9 will replace their current R6 bikes as of next season. Season. Plus, Yamaha recently announced they also won't be updating their R1 Superbike to meet stricter emission standards, and so an R9 would be the perfect way to plug that gap in their lineup. So look, if you want the full details of what an R9 could look like, then we've made an in-depth video which I'll put on the screen now so you can give it a click and give it a watch if you haven't already. Also, do let me know down in the comments below which of these rumours you're most excited about and hit subscribe if you've not already to see more of the latest motorcycle news like this right here on YouTube. Many thanks for watching today and we'll catch you in the next video.